Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if this is your first time, a very, very warm welcome to you. This channel is all about helping people feel better about themselves. Now, you may notice immediately I'm not alone today. I have two people with me on my right, Maddie Holmes, and on my left, Bella Coldstream. And if you haven't guessed, yes, she is my daughter. And we're going to talk about a couple of things because we're on holiday and I wanted to take advantage of the fact that I'm not home alone. I do have company. And these guys are about to go back to university after a very strange time of a worldwide pandemic. So we're going to talk about how that feels going back after COVID or even mid-COVID, you could say, and about vulnerability, confidence and some of the issues that face students and people in general in this very, very strange Time. So I'm going to get behind the camera so you haven't got to get bored of my face and leave the screen to Maddie and Bella back in two secs. So here we are. That's much better off of me a, bit, a little further away. So Maddie and Bella, it, it's lovely to have you here today to talk to us. So you've both had what amounts to about six months since you were last at university. You've both finished your second year at Exeter University reading uh, drama, Bella, and drama and English, Maddie. So you're about to go back into uni in these really weird, uncertain times. So tell me first, how, how does that feel, Bella? I mean, I feel apprehensive because I think everyone's going to have different boundaries and I think people are going to, we're going to have a little bit of a an issue with who wants, who's comfortable doing what. So I think I've been anxious about it because I keep thinking there are going to be things I'm willing to do that other people aren't comfortable with. I know for us, we've already had conversations with our house about what we're feeling comfortable with. Um, yeah, it's just a case of, of being aware of different people's priorities and what other people are willing to do and others aren't, I think. I was going to say it's important to think about routine. We've been out of that routine and created our own new routine in lockdown and it's going to be interesting trying to get back into <coughs> some kind of familiarity of what university life is like but at the same time with huge changes and adjustments to the way that we live and the way yeah. that we surround ourselves with other people and um, yeah I think it's going to be different but I've, I'm trying not to think too much about what those differences are necessarily going to be and try and stop comparing it to what I've known before in terms of university life and instead just going with it and enjoying it and realising that this is the new normal and this is how we have to carry on. The new normal, such a terrifying mm. phrase, isn't yeah. it? So th th there's two ways of framing this clearly. You could, you could go back in and you could be looking forward, if you like, to the challenge of doing things a bit differently and making it work. Or alternatively, you could be very easily paralysed by the anxiety of things being so different. Which of those <coughs> feelings do you think is the most is the strongest for both of you? I, I actually feel I've got very comfortable sitting at home doing what I want and like you said mm. with the routine that mm. I formed that was very different to my normal life before lockdown. So I think I'm actually more apprehensive than than excited but I know when I get there I'll be excited but I've spoken to lots of people um over letter and over message saying that we found although it was horrible at first we found a really good thing in lockdown and we found a really comfortable way of being in our own company that was a major thing for me I found myself kind of finding it really nice having time to myself and doing things at home that I didn't ever make time for before and I'm nervous that I'll lose that and not quite be prepared for the social scene if there is a social scene back at uni um yeah yeah, I think for me, it's more of a, I've found calm and space while being in lockdown mm, mm. to not have to constantly yeah. feel like I need to be doing something or busying myself with something that's going to benefit me in two weeks time or whatever. And at university, the pace of life is just so fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're constantly working and you're, you're just trying to balance so many plates. You're juggling so many plates. And I think I want to keep that consistent kind of sense of calm and, yeah, and relaxation while I'm at university. And I know that once I get there, I'm going to have to just find these techniques to remind myself and drop myself back into a sense of reality Me and be too, like, actually, yeah. this is what you need to do. You need to hit, take what time out. Because also I feel like a final year of university is, it is intense in terms of workload. It's stressful and it matters to everyone. Like getting a good degree and, and putting a hundred percent work and effort in is important to an individual. Yeah. And so, I just want to make sure that I still have that time to clock out, de-stress and just balance everything all together. You've both said, which is, which is lovely, that there are elements of what you've learned during lockdown mm. that you would like to take forwards. And I, I think everyone all over the planet is, is saying this, a sense of priority, a sense of what's really important. Mm. And, and in fact, the, the, the thing that not many things matter very much. And I think people matter a lot. 
Now, obviously at uni, you've got two things. You've got an education, but you've also got a social life, which is a, a huge part of what makes the university experience such a fantastic thing. Yeah. Now, let me talk to you on, on, on a slightly more general level about things like friendship um, and, and that horrible word FOMO that, that means the fear of missing out. Um, so on a general level, what, what does that mean to you? How do you deal with these feelings or, or are these even feelings that you, you sometimes oh, suffer definitely. from? definitely. Yeah, I mean... See, I don't think I do as much. Ah, contrast, I, yeah. straight away. Like yeah. That's so true, though, because that's where we're different. Yeah, yeah. I don't... Better I first. Don't. I, no. I, um, I, for me, and I think FOMO is slightly different for different people, but for me, FOMO is I will decide that the one night that I can't make a party or I don't feel like going to a party, but the bit, the, the bit of my brain that's going this is going to be the night where that happens and that person's going to be there and you'll be like, oh God, I didn't make it and that happened. And we were talking about this. Usually it's not that. Usually it's another kind of like average party that is fun, but nothing major goes down if you're not there. Um, and I'm going to be careful when I'm going back because um, I've got vulnerable housemates and I've got my own reasons for not wanting to like be in a giant group. And I just think I'm, I'm going to struggle, I think. I want to do small meetups, but for me the FOMO thing. I'm better at it than I was. When I first went to uni, I, it was a big deal. You wanted to be involved in everything, particularly as a fresher. And then in second year, I calmed down. But I think now everyone's had so long of not doing it. We're all going to be kind of, everyone's going to want to be at the same meeting, meetups and socials, mm -hmm. but you're different to me. So I... Well, I think it's, it's interesting. I think it's changed now. If you ask me at Christmas, I would say as a person, I don't particularly... I just know when I do and I don't want to go to something and it and I don't need persuading. I, once I've made my mind up, I'm not going to go somewhere. I, that's it. I've decided like yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go have a shower and I'm going to get an early night. Like, but I think in general, I just I've, I've too many times in the past had that slight inkling of FOMO and been like, oh, I'll go. And it's never been what you expect. Yeah. And it's never the great party that you think you're missing out on. And so I think over time, I've learned to trust my intuition and my instinct to know when a night is going to be worth going out for yeah. and having a really good time and when it's not. And over the years, I've got better at it. And now I feel like I, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm just in, in tune to it. And I know what decisions I make is up to me and, and, I, yeah. I think I think if you can find that attitude, that, mm. that's obviously a helpful attitude yeah. to have. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, we're all human and we yeah. have those days where we can't mm. find yeah. the perfect attitude yeah. to have. Is it not about managing our expectations, therefore? I, I think it's very easy to uh, imagine the perfect scenario, all those lovely, cool people that you think it's it's good to associate with, going to the going to the event that you haven't been invited to or that you can't go to, versus, versus the kind of, uh, again, stereotypically boring evening with people you'd rather not spend time <laughs> with or on your own. And, and actually, most of life doesn't do the extremes. It, it hits a, a middle, middle point. And if you can remember that, then managing that expectation can help us not suffer so much over that. Mm. Let, let's, let's go a bit deeper, if you don't mind. I'm going to talk about a, very, a subject that's very dear to my heart, and that's, that's vulnerability. Uh, what does vulnerability mean to you and how OK with it are you? In terms of your own vulnerability, I, I always say that we, we find vulnerability deeply attractive in everybody except ourselves uh, is, mm. is the thing I'm always saying. What, what's your take on that? Maddie, you go first. Um, I think it is important to be vulnerable with other people because if you are never vulnerable and show your true self, you can never make those deep connections that everybody desires in life. And I think it's really important to be real with people because nobody, I feel like as a society, people tend to dislike or kind of criticize those that have it all together all the time seem to be you know very wealthy and successful and have a family and I think it's important for people to see the raw and true side of other people because without that we can't find that similarity within ourselves as well of not always having it together all the time and and that's the the, the main way to make true human connections whether it be fr with friends or in relationships and Maddie, you're, you're 21, right? Yeah. I, I think to have found, found that already at 21 yeah. it, it is going some. I think I was probably <laughs> in my 40s before. I, I might have been able to state that as an intellectual thing. But I think if you can already feel that yeah. at 21 and, and, and sort of live by it, then that's a, a very, very good place to be. Mm. Bella, what's your take on, on vulnerability? I just love... I I, lo I oh, love no. I love it. Now I love the conversation. <laughs> I love the conversations where you immediately connect because you're both willing to go 
well to be completely honest and open which is not actually that common i don't know if it's my degree but i feel mm. like a lot of the conversations and the best friendships i make are because we're both willing to bond over our struggles and that vulnerability doesn't always mean you're struggling it, you sh it can just mean you're feeling and connecting but like often you know if i share my anxieties about something and someone else can connect with them that's when the best bonds are made mm. because i just you're both as like it's all out on the table. None of you are keeping that guard up that we all put up when we don't you're know someone, someone very new. well. Or so you're not willing to let your guard somewhere. down like mm. on a first date or something mm. like, you know. Um, yeah, for me, it's just, it, it's actually just a big strength. I don't, mm. I don't see it as a weakness and I don't think I ever did. And I don't know if that's because I was brought up by parents that were very happy for me to talk openly about things. Um, or I just kind of, I don't know, it was always, I was always open and honest. Um, yeah. For, I, I, no, that's, that's lovely. Is there anything more important than connection? I, 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 for me, I think connection with other people is almost what we're here for. And with, without it, what's the point? Hmm. I, I mean, no, I would say, I would say the same. I think, I think connecting with people is the, like the ultimate gift because, right. um, let, let, let's crack on. So w one more question again, I'm, I'm going deep. I hope you don't mind this self love and confidence. Which is just such big, big, big topic. <clears throat> Do you think one needs to have a, a healthy degree of self-esteem, confidence and self-love in order to be vulnerable? Or do you think arrogance is, is a form of confidence? Or do you think arrogance is the exact opposite? There, there's, a, there's a subject mm. for you. Ooh. I think without confidence, you can still, if you are feeling vulnerable and you're, and you're, you're acting the confidence up, it's, it's very obvious. I feel like when people try more to pretend they're okay or they're fine, and this isn't even an issue, and then they go on this big long rant like this, and then they're like, it's totally fine, it's totally fine, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> and you can just tell that there's just these pinpoints where people just, you can't really hide what you're feeling, especially if you're somebody that feels deeply, you can't hide how you feel. And it's usually very obvious. I feel like I'm a person that, it's just, I, everyone could just, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You can tell how I'm feeling <laughs> through my facial expressions, through my body language all the time, really. And when you try to hide that, that it's almost more obvious. It's also threatening to people that it? know you if, well. If people are being genuine and warm and mm, open and, yeah. and sad when they're sad and happy when they're happy and it's clearly a genuine thing you're witnessing, it's less threatening or less intimidating. Yeah. Mm. Whereas if, if you feel people are only happy when they're wearing a cover of the person they think they're supposed to be, then mm. A, that's in, it's intimidating and B, it indicates to me if they're acting up that they think the person they're pretending to be is better than the real them, yeah. mm. which to me demonstrates the exact opposite of healthy self-worth. That's what I was going to say. I was, you mentioned arrogance and I, I find our, well, everyone finds arrogance, like not particularly attractive in anyone, mm. but a lot of people would say they could probably see through it often. And, and more often than not, I find if someone's being like overly confident or arrogant and people are drawn to it because it's fun and a bit bantery and like everyone's like, oh, that, this guy's hilarious. I usually think, you know, it's actually just covering up an insecurity or um, it's their get by mechanism. If that's even a phrase. Well, there's only so um, far you can connect or even hang around somebody that is arrogant. Yeah. And you can, you know, if you're in a room with them, you can stay in that room with them, but you can't endure it for too long before you're like, I need to leave, I need to walk out the and room. And then it's really interesting else. though, because so many people are happy to come to that person's level of confidence mm. and join in the banter mm. and not mind. It's almost they, infectious maybe they, sometimes. Yeah, you kind of get on that what, level. There's one person dominating the kind of general vibe of the room and people think rather than to try and push it out away, they just think it's easier to rise yeah. to that level and, and fit in with that person that's kind of dominating 99% of the conversation and the energy in the room, yeah. rather than try and contest it and, and cause a little bit of a, <laughs> an then, argument almost. And like, then usually they're the person, the person being arrogant has a lot going on. Well, mm, not always, but sometimes. Mm, and then that could be another you talk to them and you realise like that. that and yeah. yeah, absolutely. We're going to run out of time in, in, in a second, but just before we stop, let me ask you, one more question you can both answer this fa fairly succinctly mm -hmm. if you were advising your i want to say your younger self but yourself from just two years ago so someone going into university now about how to cope socially with other people going into university for the first time what would your your gem your your one piece of advice be mm. i would i would say don't expect too much too quickly um not just in terms of like managing work, but as in 
um, the people you meet, you know, it's not like you attach yourself to the first person you meet and expect them to be like your best friend for uni. I think a lot of things can take a term or two. Um, you need to be patient with yourself and give yourself time to settle um, and give yourself time to find the right people to be around. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, let yourself adjust. I think a lot of people go into university thinking, this is going to be everything I ever dreamed with, cherries on top of the cake. And and it's it's just another like place you live. It's just like your house, yeah. but in another place with different people. And my main advice would be, let yourself be slightly more vulnerable, especially now with everything that's happened with COVID, mm -hmm. because people will be even more anxious to find their friends and settle in and rush the process of going yeah. to uni. And I think my main advice would be make sure you are a little bit more open with people and let yourself decide, like be yourself and be true to yourself and let yourself find those friends with your own gut instinct and your own intuition yeah. rather than what everybody else is, is doing. How lovely and how mature. Thank you <laughs> both so much. I'm gonna come around the other side so we can say goodbye together, but thank you very much for that. Thank, thank you. you. And like a magic trick, I've reappeared back in the middle again. So thank you again, Maddie Holmes and Bella Coldstream, for your valuable insight. Because you know, much as I love talking about all this stuff, I think it's really helpful to hear the opinion of other people. And especially when it's so relevant, people going back into university, college, or even sixth form right now, all the issues we've talked about are so important. Well, that that's it for today. If you've enjoyed this, then please, please, please give it a like, give it a comment and hit that notifications bell and subscribe and all that stuff because then you'll make sure you don't miss any more videos about the things that I believe are really important in life. Thank you for listening and see you again very soon. Bye for now.